Well, okay, let's also uh, get granular with the issue of uh, stock interest. Uh, that is actually not the stock, but uh, the interest rate cap that we alluded to before, that now also the central uh, bank governor is saying, yes, uh, let's try and renew this debate uh, because it is dragging the economy, the SMEs, uh, they, they've been adversely affected by it. Mm. Yeah, I think on that point, um, I can see where the governor is coming from. Looking at um, the growth rate achieved in uh, 2017, for example, 4.7%, mm -hmm. and then from the data we have so far up to the third quarter for 2018, yes. we're most likely going to hit something like 57 Now, um, of course, there's a lot of optimism about 2019, mm -hmm. but all that, I think, it is effectively not achieving the, the optimum. And the reason why that optimum is not being achieved partly because of the fact that there's no credit in availability of credit in the market. Mm -hmm. And especially given that um, it has hit the most um, um, uh, essential uh, market segments, uh, that's the SMEs and households who have been affected by uh, the interest capping, uh, capping law. And hence the, the renewed push for the fact that um, uh, if the caps are removed, it will unlock credit to the essential segments of the, of the credit market that are, uh, are uh, contributing to the economic growth and therefore be able to push the economy towards its, uh, its full potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. R right. Um, <coughs> let me give you an interesting story as well. You know, in 2016 when this uh, matter was unfolding about the interest rate cap, um, the, the, the mood in the country was let's lynch the banks. Why? Because the banks, the, uh, there was, the banks had gone into runaway uh, interest rates and, and additional charges on their, on mm -hmm. their facilities. And, uh, you know, there was a very negative mood against the entire banking industry. And I remember in 2016 now, we, we said as a chamber of commerce, because we represent businesses, uh, over 20,000 businesses in all the 47 counties, let's also weigh in on this very important topic. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked my team to prepare a statement, and I was going to issue the statement the mm -hmm. next day in support of the interest rate cap. Mm -hmm. And our trade department uh, then, um, had a, I had an early morning meeting with them, mm -hmm. and their, 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 feel, uh, their view was that we shouldn't issue the statement because in the fullness of time, our own stakeholders and members mm -hmm. would be denied credit. Mm -hmm. So we didn't actually weigh in. I felt, you know, my, 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 I was very, very for the idea of issuing the statement, but then I went with the wisdom that it would not ultimately be in our favor. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Debal, one of the things is any economy to grow, you need to have access to capital. You need to have a stable legal and regulatory environment. Yes. And you need to have a plan on how you can grow your SMEs so that they can therefore create employment and, you know, expand uh, economic activity. Now, in terms of where we are, I think that we need to go for a system. We need to actually remove the interest rate cap. We need to have a negotiated system where there is an agreed ceiling and an agreed bottom in, ter in terms of the interest rate that can be charged. Mm -hmm. That is why we hear about LIBO. What is LIBO? LIBO is a, is a, is a bottom ceiling yeah, in, in, in London. And we need to have a negotiated uh, risk-based interest rate. LIBO? Yeah, I mean, no, LIBO is a London interbank borrowing okay. rate. Oh, okay, it okay. is a rate that is used to determine the interest you will get in London, for example. And mm -hmm. it is almost an, a, a global benchmark today. But then the thing is, what do I favor in Kenya? I think we need to have a risk-based uh, regime, whereby the more risky mm -hmm. lendings Will, will be charged higher by the banks. Yes. It, is it is commonsensical. I mean, why would the bank, if you know, if they know that you're a high uh, uh, risk borrower, mm -hmm. then I think they need to be allowed as well to charge a, a premium for their capital because they will be giving it to you in a more risky environment. And there are intervening organizations. There are companies, Credit Reference Bureau. There are organizations that have a metrics of determining credit risk. So if you are lending to Safaricom, for example, Safaricom is, a, is a, probably a triple A. Um, corporate in Kenya today, they would therefore enjoy a better rate of interest because they are a safer bet uh, to lend to. So for me, I go for risk-based lending and I go for the removal of the capping of interest rates and I go for a negotiated floor and upper ceiling in terms of interest. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dituro. Yeah. <coughs> yes, I think it's uh, I like the Cape's uh, uh, follow-through argument, but first and foremost, I think I want to make something very clear in my view. If you do a comparative study in terms of the interest rates in most countries, yes. we are among the highest in the world, mm -hmm. even at the 14.5%. Yes. If you go to countries like developed economies like uh, 
UK, Japan. You're talking of 0.5%. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the whole essence is to peop give people opportunity to borrow and they create wealth. Mm -hmm. I think we need to do, and I think that's a point to uh, keep you saying, of the ceiling and the bottom. Yes. I think we need to create that margin. We mm -hmm. mandate that margin. I think it doesn't make sense when I borrow and I've been charged at the 30%. And when I deposit the kind of returns I get, it doesn't make sense at all. The margin is too wide. And do, do remember one fellow coming from the, uh, the American Security Exchange and say, if you want to be rich, go and establish a bank in Kenya. Which is sad. And I think what is, uh, as much as I hear what Kip is saying, the risk base is good, but the argument we have with most of the institutions, they say SMEs are risky. Mm -hmm. So they charge them a premium. Mm -hmm. These guys are not able to pay that. I'm a strong believer in terms of self-regulation, SROs. But our banks don't have that self-regulation. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I was shocked by Jiroge, and I've talked with him before. And, and I hope what he's saying that will leave the cup. There's something else he brought very strongly. And I think that is probably in it and the issue of corporate governance within mm -hmm. the bank. Corporate, corporate governance. Corporate governance. We yeah. need to address it. We, yeah, we will. We'll, in fact, uh, we will address it to it because we have another story from the Nairobi Security Exchange and how they're trying to push the corporate governance. In light of what is happening with also in, insider trading, I think also that has uh, brought uh, the question of, of corporate governance as well. But l let's just gravitate also to the issue of what now the parliamentarians are saying, that we should actually raise now to the interest rate where it is right now to uh, 16 percentage, and not 16, but 6 percentage. Uh, from where it is, and this is what is being proposed by Moses Kuria. This, he says, uh, should support, you know, the SMEs in accessing finance because now the banks have locked out the SMEs. Uh, they're, they're, they're not able now to, you know, uh, service, you know, their, their businesses. They're not able to uh, uh, continue with their businesses and uh, pay their suppliers. This can be a, maybe the prime solution in terms of... Uh, this but as, as the answer, as you, you need to look at the report of 2016 from the Kenya Bureau, uh, Kenya National Bureau of Standards, when they actually did a study on the SMEs. And the, one of the things they were asking them is, where do you get your money from? Most of them were not talking about banks. Kenya Bureau of uh, Statistics? Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, not 2016 uh, yes, report. Uh, okay. Debal, I've been to 37 counties personally, and um, it's interesting to see what, what actually obtains on the ground in Kenya. Mm -hmm. There are certain parts of this country where there's actually zero access to credit. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, if you want, uh, we can have that conversation offline, but I'll tell you, there are parts of the big, huge parts of this country that you cannot access any credit. You'll open your business, and I'm sorry, there's no bank, there's no circle, there's no microfinance institution, nothing. You're stuck. It is you and your own sources. Maybe the shadows. And then there are other parts of the country where circles have actually filled in the, the slots of traditional banks. I don't know whether KB has done a research on that. There are parts. If you go to Embu today and Kirinyaga, they don't need the bank. There are very, very strong circles that are actually meet, uh, in the, with balance sheets in the billions of shillings that are actually serving uh, the small trader in that place. Now, why is SME risky? And, I, and this is a topic I feel very, very passionate about. Mm -hmm. You see, Kenya has paid lip service to SMEs. We have never created an environment. <laughs> in fact, I was very happy recently when the president um, convened that meeting at Strathmore yes. and, and acknowledged that the government had actually paid lip service to SMEs. <laughs> And I want to say, with no fear of contradiction, that there is all the regimes we've had in this country, the first regime, the second regime, the third regime, and the current regime, there has been none that has focused its attention mm -hmm. on the SMEs. And we are seeing recently when the president acknowledged it, we think that that is the beginning of now a resurgence of the SMEs. Yes. Why are SMEs suffering? The mortality rate today for SMEs in Kenya is very, very high. It is very high because also debt is not being serviced. If, uh, when, when, the, when devolution came, mm -hmm. we created 47 county governments. We have the national county. We have the national government. They, they give out contracts yes. uh, to suppliers. Their suppliers and their contractors who are engaged mm -hmm. in doing business with these uh, uh, both national and devolved governments. Yes. What is the amount of money that the national and county governments are holding for suppliers and contractors? Mm -hmm. The last I knew, it was over 230 billion shillings. At the same time, we are dealing with a credit regime where if you don't service your debt within three months, the, the, the bank has yes. to provide. 
So you're creating a very tight credit regime, and at the same time, you're not paying your debts. So what, what's that SME supposed to do? Mm -hmm. and, and actually, for me, it comes as no surprise that we are seeing a reduction in the amount that KRA is able to collect. Because the reality is we have not created an environment mm -hmm. for SMEs to thrive. All right. But, but I thought also uh, the legislatures, or I don't know if it was a private bill, they, uh, uh, they're actually coming up with a bill on uh, how they're going to be uh, safeguarded in terms of payment that they will demand, you know, a sort of a contractual agreement with the government that you will be paying within, let's say, 90 days or a circle of uh, 30 days. I don't know if you're privy to this particular kind I, 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 I I'm aware of it, but it's, it's, it's the reality on the ground is that there's nothing of the sort that is happening. There are people who have gone into bankruptcies, there are families that are broken, people have closed their businesses, and they are owed millions and millions of shillings. So you see, of course, a, a legislative intervention would be good. But again, unless we deal with what's already owed, then we still have a challenge. So do you think this particular a suggestion by Moses Kuria that uh, we should raise the percentage point to from where it is at least at a six percentage point uh, from uh, 14 maybe to 20 percent will also serve the will we go back to where we were I really agree with Moses Kuria <laughs> but I, I, I would like to go back to you know having a floor ceiling and, a, and an upper ceiling and a risk-based mm -hmm. lending regime mm -hmm. right um, floor I'm, ceiling yes uh, I think I mean if I can just weigh in on that I'm um, uh, I, I, one thing I'm happy the fact that um, uh, legislators are actually realizing that there's a problem and they're trying to think with us in terms of coming up with a solution. Mm -hmm. And Moses Curia's proposal is just one of the possibilities in terms of trying to ensure that um, credit is unlocked to the needy, what I can call needy segments of yes. the credit market. The SMEs in particular, as Kip has mentioned, mm -hmm. household and the others that have not been able to access credit in the current regime. And so Moses Kuria's proposal is quite simple. He's saying that um, uh, he'll maintain the caps as they are. So the caps are not being removed. So mm -hmm. the cap will be maintained at 4% above the CBR, which is currently 13%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he's creating a window, a negotiation window, within which the bank and the borrower can negotiate a risk premium above the cap. Yes. So like for example, and then he's creating that window, mm -hmm. a 6% window in there. Mm -hmm. So it means that I'm a, a customer who otherwise would not have been able to borrow under the current regime yes. can then come before the bank and they can negotiate that given your risk profile, I will charge you a rate of say 16%, which is 3% above the current cap. But now in the proposal of Korea, it means that at 16%, mm -hmm. the bank is able to lend within the law. Because currently, you cannot lend at 16%. The law limits you to a maximum of 13. 13 years. So under Kuria's proposal, it means that um, a customer whose risk profile is a little bit above the, the, you know, the, the current cap can then be able to access credit. And we'll then see um, an outflow in mm -hmm. terms of uh, credit going out to uh, customers who will be able to be fitted within the 19 percent because it's now 13 plus the 6 percent that he has added. Mm -hmm. So anything between 13 to 19 percent will now be accommodated within that window. Mm -hmm. But I think CEO, <clears throat> as we also look in that and I think it's also important to bring some kind of discipline within the government itself. Yeah. Because what happened in most of these cases, the government can't have done start issuing treasury bonds. So what do I do as a bank? Mm. I'm not bothered about SMEs. Mm. I'm just this one I'm granted by the government. Yeah. Mm. And I think one of the big culprits in my view in that uh, was the government itself. Mm. So it, government itself has to, and I think I like Kip's narrative. When you look in terms of how much you're getting from the SMEs, it's a priority area. And, and, you know, and the president came up very strongly in, 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 in Strasbourg. And I want, let me make it clear. Mm -hmm. I think what I got the president saying, and I think we missed the point the president was saying, when he was saying, why are we importing fish from, from China? From China, yes. To me, he was challenging the business people. We have a fresh lake here, Lake Victoria. Mm -hmm. Why can't we export fish from Lake Victoria, which is fresh, to other parts of the world? Mm -hmm. And I think the point keep is to stretch here how do we, this sector, which is so much, actually it organizes more when you go to the rural areas. How does we as a government mm -hmm. come very strong in terms of supporting it? And I think when you have a government here, every day issuing treasury bills, it's not helping at all in terms of borrowing this country. Yeah. Because as the, the, the guy who is leaving the Standard Bank here, he was very clear, was saying, 
I buy these treasury bonds and I go to play golf. And it's still put. Yeah, and it will not create employment. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, let me just say something else. You know, we need also to consider an, a credit amnesty. Why am I saying this? There are people today who have been listed um, by Credit Reference Bureau. Yes. They have been listed not because they, 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 they fail to service their debts willingly, but because they themselves were not paid in the first place. So you see, many people today are, um, you see, what well, it's commonsensical for banks, as Wainaina says, Professor Wainaina says, if you have a pool of funds and there's sovereign debt available through T-bills, and then there's this pool of funds also that you can deploy to the SME sector, what would you rather do? You, will need, you don't need any personnel mm -hmm. to deploy if you're sending the money to the government. So right now, because of the fact that we have got a very, very big problem with unpaid debt, a lot of people have fallen foul with the reference bureaus. And they are therefore today deemed as not credit worthy. Not because of any fault of their own. All they did is that they did business with government. They weren't paid. As a result of not being paid, they didn't pay somebody else. As a result of not paying somebody else, they were listed. As a result of being listed, they cannot borrow today. So these guys are literally out of the, mm -hmm. of, of the, of the economy. So the cascading effect yeah. actually so is really me, damaging. I actually mm -hmm. favor an amnesty for those people who are in that situation if they can demonstrate that it is actually they are done legitimate, bona fide business and they were not paid. Mm -hmm. And of course also coming to that debate is the issue of uh, the, 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 the rent defaulters as well. Yeah. If they should be enlisted to the, the CRB as well, who people don't uh, pay their rent uh, on time as well. But